Part 43. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, so we have I2S plus BR2 liquid yields 2 IBR gas, and they tell us that we have a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Now, we want to solve for that equilibrium constant. Remember, the equilibrium constant is the capital K value. And there's technically only one formula that links uh, Kelvin, not Kelvin, the equilibrium constant K to temperature. And that's the formula that I have down below here. So if I just pull this up, we can kind of work with this a little bit. We want to solve for the equilibrium constant. That's the K value. This equals the E button on the calculator, and it's all raised to the negative delta G over R times T. So let's see what we can plug in. Now the R value is a constant value, right? That's 8.314. That's never going to change. And the units for the R value is in joules per mole times Kelvin. So this will tell you the units as to what to use. So for example, it has to be in Kelvin. They gave me the temperature in Celsius. So the temperature, 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius, I just have to add 273, right, to get my Kelvin. I can add plus 273. If you want to be more specific, it's 273.15. And this would be literally 273.15. Okay. But now they didn't give me a delta G value, right? So that's the, that's the thing that we have to work on here. If we want to find that equilibrium constant, I got to find the delta G. Well, here's the catch, guys. If I want to use those values in the back of a textbook, right, I could go in the back of the textbook, find the delta Gs, and just plug it in, products minus reactants. However, those delta G values are only at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. That is not where we're at. We're at zero degrees Celsius. So we have to find another way to get that delta G. So then you ask yourself, well, is there any other formula that links delta G with the temperature? And here it is down below. Delta G equals delta H minus whatever temperature you have times the delta S. But now I have to find the delta H and the delta S. Now it's fair game to go in the back of the textbook to find out what those delta H's and the S values are. So we're ultimately now going to try to use this formula, but we have to find out what is the delta H for the whole entire reaction? And what's the delta S for the whole entire reaction? So let's work on delta H first. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. And what's the formula? I already did the, the busy work for you guys. I went in the back of the textbook to find out each individual delta H value and each individual delta S value for the components. Now we just have to find out, you know, what's the whole for the reaction? Well, the formula to find out a delta H for our whole entire reaction is this formula right here, right? Maybe I'll just make this a little smaller. Delta H for the whole entire reaction is always equal to the sum, that's this symbol here, so it just means add up the sides of all your delta H products minus the sum of your delta H reactants. Always look at those coefficients. You have one I2, one Br2, and two IBRs. Whatever your coefficients are, that's what you have to times by the number that's in the back of the textbook. So this should technically be times by one, this should be times by one, and this value should be times by two. Now sum up your sides. It's I2 plus Br2, so I'm gonna add this, these two values together, but that would make the total zero. And now I just have to do two times 40.84, so two times 40.84, I get 81.68. Now I'm going to use this formula to solve for that delta H. The delta H for the reaction equals the 81.68 minus zero. Okay, so this we know what, what the answer is, right? Delta H for the reaction equals 81, 81.68. And the units here, if you use the back of the textbook numbers, this is going to be in kilojoules. Now we have to do the same thing for the S values. 
we can use the same formula that we use with the H's, which is this one, right? But now instead of, instead of putting in H's for them all, I could just substitute S's and I'll do the same exact thing. So the S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the S products minus the S reactants, the sum of the S reactants. So same type of procedure. Take each number and times them by the coefficients. So this one is technically times by one, times by one, and times by two. And then you have to add up if you have multiple on one side. So this would be addition. And then this one, you don't have to add anything. So let's see, I got 116.14 plus 152.23. So I get a total of 268.37 on the reactant side and two times 258.66. That's a total of 517.32. Now, I'm going to put those numbers into my formula. Delta S for the reaction equals 517.32 minus uh, 268.37. Okay, delta S for the reaction. I guess we'll put these little notches over here. Equals... The 517 number minus the 268.37. Okay, and I get 248.95. Units for this is joules per Kelvin. Now we have the delta H value. We have the delta S value. We have the temperature. Let's use this formula to finally solve for delta G. But now the thing here is you have conflicting units of energy. The delta H is in kilojoules and the delta S is in joules. You gotta convert one or the other. What do we do? Do we convert to joules or do we convert to kilojoules? I would look back at the overarching you know, equation that we have to use. We ultimately have to use this one. And the R value is telling us that we need it in joules. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna convert the kilojoules into joules times by a thousand. That's the conversion. Or you could take the decimal, move it over three times to the, uh, that's the right side. <laughs> so I get 81680. So 81,680 joules. So let's go. Delta G equals the H value, which was now 81,680 minus the temperature in Kelvin. So this would be the 273.15 times the, Celsius, uh, the, Celsius, the entropy value, the S value, the 248, right? 248.95. Plug this into the calculator. I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. Let's plug it all in and see what we get. So we get 81680 minus 273.15 times that 248 value. And okay, pretty big number. So we get 13,679.3075, right? And that's in joules now. Okay, so that's going to be my delta G value. Thank goodness. I'm not going to round because it's not the final answer. So I try to keep as many of the numbers that I possibly have in there. Okay. Now let's write down our formula. So equilibrium constant equals the E value raised to the negative fraction. Now we get 13679.3075 all divided by the R and the T value. So divided by the 8.314 and then divided by the 273.15. What I would do is I would just do this math just so that you can simplify it to one number when you take the E raised to the. So let's see, K equals E raised to, the negative is in the formula. So 
negative of the answer divided by 8.314. And now I want to keep that 273 in the denominator, so I'm going to press divide again, 273.15. Okay. And I get negative 6.0235 and a lot of other numbers. I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot. But I'm going to put all of them in, in my calculation. So now let's just take the E raised to that value. K equals, we're almost there, second LN. That's where you can find the E button. Grab that whole thing and press enter. Okay. Sig figs, uh, in our final calculation, seems like four was the lowest. So I'm just going to put this value into four sig figs. So 2.42. 2 uh, 2.421 times 10 to the, what do we got here? Negative three. Looks good to me. And that is your equilibrium constant. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Um, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Education's cool. Learning's fun. All right. Uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye.